In the preceding eight rounds of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama, at every venue, one driver has swept the top step of the podium. Will that trend continue here? Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is an amazing facility for the ninth and 10th rounds of the championship. It is time for the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama at this mega venue. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Creamer, joined once again by Randy Popes. And Randy, this track is indeed mega. It is fast and it is blind. Fourth and fifth gear corners. And wow, what a beautiful day for racing. It is that, 75 degrees, barely a cloud in the sky. This is what the wonderful Canadian fans wanted to have, and they saw a great race in round nine. At the start, Jesse Lazar, Canadian, led it from the go. But look in the back, a couple of cars get together, few more involved, a couple of them just touch the barriers. Amazingly, all save one. This guy, Mark Bullitt, able to drive off. There was no full course caution. He was able to get it far enough off track. Sloan Yuri in that number 20 Hertz JDX machine put on a passing display coming up three spots twice with outside passes like this around the outside of the wicked fast turn eight. Put him into the lead and off he would go. Later on, Jesse Lazar helped off the track by Angel Benitez. Lazar only seventh in the points, but Benitez in the top three. He would serve a drive through penalty. And in the end, Slow Nuri, by the biggest victory margin we have seen this year, took the win over Colin Thompson, keeping his point lead, Thompson did, and Christina Nielsen getting her second podium of the season. In the Gold Cup category, Jeff Mosing in the Mosing Motor Cars top entry put together a perfect run, winning the Gold Class, winning the Masters class within the Gold Cup category. An absolutely great day for him over point leader Patrick Otto Madsen and third finishing Kristen Trieger. So that sets the stage for this 10th round of the championship. And as we show you the starting grid, we also show you the points. Colin Thompson in the platinum class up by 12. Mike Lewis another 23 behind Colin Thompson, the leader. That's all referencing the leader. In the gold category, you can see also close Patrick Otto Madsen leading after a strong start at Sebring, but Fred Port at Kristen Trigger and especially Mike Levitas and Jeff Mosing are closing in. So as the field rolls off on their pace and parade lap, as you take a look, ooh, Colin Thompson a little slow on the getaway there. Hopefully he'll be able to get his car started. That is huge. Yeah, there it goes. That's good. Randy, tell us about the difference between platinum and gold. Got two classes racing today. The platinum cars are brand new, all new 2014 Porsches. You can buy them from the factory, ready to go. The car's a little bigger, a little teeny bit more powerful, but mostly it's a big improvement in handling. Two to three seconds a lap. And if we look over at the gold category, those cars are from the last couple of years. It's the past generation, still able to come out and race hard in a 997, kind of the classic car now because race cars get old fast. One year old and they're, they're classic. And they've done a great job keeping the 2013-2010 with update packages. By the way, a quick reference as you're watching, if the wing end plates and mirrors are black, that's platinum. If they're yellow, they're gold. We'll be back with round 10. Don't go anywhere. Field out on the pace lap. As you can see, lights out in the pace car. So this 10th round of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama about to unfold. Big thing on the pole, that number 31 of Jesse Lazar, the door doctor, more speed entry. This is the first track, Randy, that this now 17-year-old has come to that he's raced at before. This track benefits the local heroes. If you've got a lot of time here, you can be faster here. And we see that in Jesse Lazar's performance in qualifying. Yeah, he was very strong. He knows the tricks, but well, look at this. He's laying back. Angel Andres Benitez, the 0-5 there, sort of moving ahead just a little bit. Now waits, and uh, Jesse brings the rest of that right-hand row into position, up into turn 10, and we should see this one start. 45-minute timed event, round 10 of the championship, and there is the call. We are green, and boy, look like... The 0-5 of Benitez got a little bit of a jump. I think he realized he'd gone early, backed off, and that let uh, Lazar sweep into the lead. Yeah, he did go early, and it looks like he was trying to fix it. We'll see how <laughs> the officials feel about it. Turn two, over the hill, blind, fast fourth gear sweeper. What a great corner. Boy, and I'll tell you, an amazing start, I think, by Colin Thompson. He qualified in the sixth spot. Yes, indeed, that bright orange car right now up into third, but he's getting heat from round nine winner. That is uh, Sloan Yuri in that hurt century, but Jesse Lazar in that Garaga Door Doctor more speed machine. You know, track knowledge along with some amazing coaching from a guy named Price Cobb, that's paying some dividends, I think. It is. They come into turn five, Moss Corner, the only slow corner on the track. The slowest point right here leads on to that long, long, uphill straightaway. 
Yeah, it is a track that is just wicked fast, obviously, as much downforce as you can get on the cars. Uh, and as you come up to that turn eight section of track, the speed you can carry into there, there's a look at Christina Nielsen, and she's being chased by Mike Lewis, the number 98, that black and white machine from Competition Motorsports and Curb Records. But there is your points leader, Colin Thompson, with Sloan Urie, the round nine winner, right there. And that was a huge start for Thompson, not just, there's that turn eight we're talking about, not just in terms of getting up into that position, but in terms of points. Greg, he got some help from the craziness going on up front. <laughs> yeah. When Benitez backed off, it really jammed up his lane. And I think that's part of how Thompson was able to move up so quickly. And he's going to jump on that opportunity to be sure. Here is turn two. A lot of drivers say, Randy, this is one of the trickiest, scariest corners in the world. It's glorious, Greg. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, that's not good. And when that happens, that... I'll tell you what, oh. back before they put in all that paved runoff, that would have been a lot bigger than that, that's for sure. That was Charlie Putman for Dempsey Racing having an off. Greg, if you leave your braking and downshifting a little too long, you get over that hill, the car's light, and it loosens right up, and I think that's what we see here. That was a little uh, late brake and maybe a late downshift that loosened him up, and he just touches that wall, but that's concrete. Ouch! Yeah, that was, at least he hit it flush. That's always a good sign. Now we'll see whether... That's going to precipitate a yellow. Looks like uh, he might be able to get it off track. Meanwhile, Jesse Lazar now starting to stretch that advantage just a little bit. And he said a bit, ooh, Santiago Creel, the number 60. Uh, that Looks too like down two in again. turn two. Yeah, a little bit further downstream. They just paved all that. That used to be grass right there that we're looking at. And if you ever dropped wheels off a two, you were going for a ride all the way to the wall. Now it's actually easier because it's not as risky. And Santiago Creel, hopefully he'll be able to get going again. And they got a yellow out for maybe him and for Charlie Putman over there at turn two. Yeah, Putman couldn't get moving. He was still up there, wasn't he? Could be hidden behind that truck. I think he is. So I think that's the primary reason. Yep, there he is, because it looked like Creel was actually able to start moving. But uh, they're over there now and are going to uh, try and get that number 40 from Dempsey Racing. And yes, that is the Dempsey Racing owned by Patrick Dempsey. Uh, he is uh, very involved now in the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama, as well as what he's doing, certainly, in the Tudor Series. I met Patrick Dempsey at a race. I didn't know who he was. I don't watch TV much. <laughs> we were just talking about the well, coming up event, and somebody said, you know who that is? Well, I didn't know. But what a guy and a real enthusiast. Uh, he truly is. He loves his racing, no question about that. And we're under caution. We're going to step away, but we have a lot more to come here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Crowd is looking forward to the return to racing as Charlie Putman's Dempsey Racing number 40 on the back of the flatbed and heading off track. We're looking forward to it too because I have a feeling as quickly as Jesse Lazar was romping away on that first start, I think it might be a little bit closer here with Benitez chomping at the bit. Colin Thompson right there, Yuri, Christina Nielsen, Mike Lewis. I mean, what a feel. All the regular stars of this series are <laughs> yeah. up front and I think it's going to be an advantage for the guys that don't and gals that don't normally run here to get this chance to have seen the track, get warmed up, and be ready to go. Whereas Jesse Lazar, for one, he's young. Two, he has a lot of experience here. He was flat out right from the get-go. I think it might be closer on the restart. Well, we're about to find out, I think, as we look like we are getting ready and starting to build speed. Indeed, pace car makes the move into the pit lane. There it is, through nine, up into turn 10, Jesse Lazar feeding a throttle out of turn 10 and the green flag flies we are back at it benitez very close actually a little margin building between benitez and thompson as they head down into turn one benitez was wide awake and ready to go he's stuck to the tail of azar he's not going to let him get away this time up and over that rise down you fall down the hill double apex let it feed out then right back in again and on to another wicked quick corner the right hander coming up turn three those speeds make the aerodynamic factor much more important here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park than at many of the other tracks. And it can be tough for Benitez right up behind Lazar. He's not in clean air. He actually has a little less downforce. So he might be picking up a push in those high-speed corners if he's running too close. Front end won't turn. Yep, it can happen. If the Porsches are a little light in the front anyway, it can be magnified. And as good as these Yokohama ENVR2s are, you start to overheat those fronts, they're going to go off, and it just sort of magnifies and exaggerates everything, doesn't it? Yeah, you, you have this dichotomy of a little bit less grip, but then you have the draft on the exit and down the straight. Like here at the end of the uh, Mario Andretti Straight at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, into turn eight, super fast fourth gear entry. It's fabulous. And right there, you saw Lazar feigning to the inside a little bit as we drop back. Look at our gold class leader, that 
sort of yellowish and maroon colored machine. That is the Mosing Motor Car 01 of Top Racing and Jeff Mosing, who won yesterday and had the pole for this race as well. And he's sandwiched in between some of the platinum cars. What happens is you get the, some of the back of the field of the platinum cars mixes with the front of the field of the gold cars. And the gold drivers will often try to deliberately get a couple of platinum cars in between as a cushion. Meanwhile, back at the front of the overall and platinum class, Lazar now finds himself building that little bit of a, oh, a car length or two at this stage. Here comes Mosing down the hill, and I think he's got uh, right behind him, I think it's going to be Patrick Otto Madsen. Uh, yeah, Cisneros is there, then Patrick Otto Madsen in that mix as well. There's Cisneros in that Momo livery car, and he actually makes the move and gets through. Jeff Mosing making it easy for him because that way it won't slow him down very much. And the next car back is David Williams, another platinum car. Coming out of turn five, onto the back straightaway, Mike Levitas is third in the class and he's trying to get back in the hunt. Mosing has had a great start in gold. Well, he has, and Levitas is really one of the big stories this year. Running the platinum class at Sebring, not feeling comfortable in it. He's run gold before, said, I want to go back to the gold car, I like it, and then immediately has been on a tear. And without those two races, he's still chipping away at a top three right now in the points. Let's see how this sorts out. Jesse Lazar really starting to gap the field again, but it's a job of tire management too and we've got to see how it unfolds over the first half an hour of this race it's a sprint but it's a long sprint well exactly and I think what will help that a little bit obviously that caution relatively long one at the very front to clean those those two cars up lets them now be able to push those tires maybe just a little bit harder but you still have to be mindful of what you're dealing with with these tires you got to take care of them just a little bit as we drop back a little bit there's Mike Lewis uh, we just saw a glimpse of of course he's turned into a major player in this points championship but for Jesse Lazar just turned 17 uh, again his only car experience prior to this season in this series was Canadian Formula Ford 1600s uh, otherwise a multiple national karting champion in the Canadian ranks now there is a look at Patrick Otto Madsen and yeah all over the back to him right now is Mike Levitas. There in turn five, all the way down to second gear here. Got to have good traction and get a good run off the corner. Can't get too much of the curb or it'll bounce you up and uh, reduce your run. And Levitas trying to work that draft. Let's see if he can get a run on Madsen and maybe try to get inside him on into turn eight. And not only is this a long flat out stretch, you're climbing the whole time. So you've got that double whammy. Uh, in terms of your momentum, don't you? It makes the power even more important. Oh! Oh, here we are. That's Levitus a makes the move. I think he helped him out there. <laughs> I do too. I think I think Levitus. I think maybe he got squeezed a little bit over that curve, yeah. Randy, and then that, uh, of course, loosened him up and got him over into Patrigato. But meanwhile, that's going to give Mosing an even bigger margin right now. Yeah, I think that draft got Levitus right up in there to where he made his move, and I think Madsen didn't want him in there, and it was just <laughs> mano a mano. A wrestling match. Exactly. And it uh, looked like there was a little bit of uh, contact there as Mosing, remember, he won the uh, the previous round here, the ninth round, so uh, he's in a position to perhaps sweep right now. And look at this. You've got this group right up at the front. Uh, the cars that we haven't addressed there are Casey Coleman, the number 15 Wright Motorsports uh, Cool Sport entry, and the number 60 Mexico-sponsored machine from Wright Motorsports of Santiago Creel. And that whole group has made a big break. They have, it, it's looking like these four cars up front are the real factors. Well, they are as we are taking a look at some of the real factors in this championship. We're going to step away for just a moment. Lots more to come here in round 10. Closing in on the halfway point of this 45-minute 10th round of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. And uh, it is still a strong run at the front by young Jesse Lazar, followed by the very experienced Angel Benitez, and of course the rest of the field, including point leader, right there in that bright orange Porsche Bucks County entry from Kelly Moss Racing of Colin Thompson. Uh, I love but, this view, Greg, oh, where they're phenomenal, drifting over that turn four corner. Yeah, it's another corner, just falls away right down to that uh, approach up into Moss as we watch Jeff Mosing again, who really has put his stamp on the gold class here. And he's also the master's leader in gold class. And to explain that, each of the classes, platinum and gold, have a subcategory for the more experienced drivers, 45 years of age or older. And uh, Mosing yesterday swept them both in the ninth round of the championship, and he's looking to maybe do it again today. Jesse Lazar at 17 doesn't quite fit that master's category, though. That young man, uh, he's just starting a glorious career. He's looking strong. 
Well, wow, this is a great battle as it looks like Mike Shine has been able to sneak by and get around Casey Coleman here as we watch them. That is the number 16 that we are looking at. A Mike Shine from New York City, New York. He's Casey managed Coleman. to pick that spot up. Yep. Casey Coleman, a very strong driver uh -oh. as a Masters also, although not as strong as usual. And maybe it's this Canadian Tire Motorsport Park track. Well, it does uh, require a little bit something special, but you're absolutely right. I mean, coming in here at this point, Casey Coleman has seven wins in the uh, Platinum Masters category. So just absolutely untouchable right now. And has had a number of top fives in the overall. But Angel Benitez, I think he always kind of, you know, looks back at what happened here in 2013 in that first race with Madison Snow when Madison got him coming out of the last turn by 11 one thousandths of a second and I think that uh, always motivates Mr. Benitez here. Angel is quick uh -oh. and this race is by no means over. Yeah he swept the opener at Sebring he's been fast everywhere and uh, I think he's a little frustrated right now to find himself out of that point lead but certainly not by too much. Jeff Mosing looking strong Levitas is in he's in the mirrors but he's not within striking distance. It'll be interesting to see he's certainly been running some wicked quick laps Levitas has and uh, it's just right now Mosing you know if he's doing what you would think would be the the right ploy Randy you correct me on this is at this point you want to just conserve just a little something so if somebody does get up close to you you've got something left to be able to fight with that's called playing it smart and you know what it can make you faster too you smooth out a little bit it, you go easier on the tires it can be a benefit. And right now that guy coming up in his mirrors is not a huge concern for him because you take a look those mirrors are not yellow which means that's a platinum class machine that's David Calvert Jones. So if he so chooses he can just let David Calvert go but there's Levitas and you're right Levitas is closing. He's using all the road on the exit of turn two. <laughs> the speeds are so high. Corner three here is just barely fourth gear and corner four one of the great turns flat out this view right here from behind drifting over that hill at over 140 it just makes my heart race because I know what it feels like in the car it's spectacular to be sure it's like flying yeah I bet now right now Mosing would have liked to, I think been a little closer to David Calvert Jones coming out of Moss to be able to get a little bit of a toe because uh, on that lap alone Levitas has definitely made up some ground so there's a certain point of conservation but you also need to be ready to go when you need to as we watch now that battle between Benitez there's Lazar your leader but Benitez and Colin Thompson that's starting to get interesting. Yeah but it looks like Lazar has got the measure of this field at the moment he's gapped a little bit maybe it's because Thompson has taken some shots at Benitez and anytime you're racing it slows you down a little bit versus running a nice clean lap like Lazar is doing up front. Well remember for those highlights Lazar and Benitez had that contact over turn eight in the ninth round that resulted in Lazar off track Benitez getting a penalty so I think Lazar is well motivated to make sure he's got as much room as possible uh, but you've got that we always have to keep an eye on those points battles and that Benitez Thompson that's the big story right there Yuri is closing and with that win yesterday he made up a lot of ground certainly but uh, right now this 17 year old really is showing that he owns and knows Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. It's that home field advantage it like is. turn four right there so fast. Well there's little tricks there's little nuances to every track when well, you've got a track like this I mean when you talk about you know there are other tracks that are fast Randy but this one's relentless and blind and yeah. the car gets light and it feels like it's going to spin and you got to trust it's going to grip up later in the corner just hard to do at speeds. Yeah they do make it work that's for sure as we're watching some of this great battling a little bit farther back in the pack up and over the rise we come that's Mark Bullitt remember he had that issue in that first race uh, yesterday now he's been able to put together a good run and then there's this group and look at Levitas he has closed up he is there. He's caught him on the straightaway look at him run up on him in turn eight Michael has got a set up on that gold category car. I wonder I mean there's not a lot you can change in these cars but you can flatten that wing out just a little bit. I don't know that I'd want to do that here but some drivers do it and Levitas showing the nose heading down into one not quite enough there but in gold the battle is on Lazar leads overall and in platinum. 25 minutes gone here in the 10th round of the 45 minute Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama event and that means tires are getting used up a little bit Randy but fuel is burning off the cars are lighter the grip may not be there it's adjustment time. Yeah later in the race you're you're dealing with you're reaping what you sowed in terms <laughs> exactly. of your setup a good setup will be quick at the end of the race. 
Well, and maybe that's what we're seeing from Mike Levitas, because the longer this race seems to go, the quicker he seems to get, much, I'm sure, to the consternation of uh, that guy, Jeff Mosing, looking in the mirror all the time and seeing Levitas, who he knows has been just superb this season since he made the switch back to his beloved Gold Cup category. I'll tell you what, I give Mosing a lot of credit. Jeff Mosing's running great as a new guy in this gold category, whereas Mike Levitas does have the advantage of his experience. He's driven for a couple of years with TPC Racing. Absolutely. As we go back to the lead, there's Lazar, there's Benitez, Thompson, Yuri. Christina Nielsen having another strong run, but here's a bit of a story. Normally, we don't see Casey Kuhlman dropping off like that, but he seems to have uh, just lost touch a little bit with that group. Could be that setup issue. It may not be working for him later in the race. It may have been a little too hard on the rear tires, and the rear tires are doing a lot of work on a Porsche 911. They're very, very important. If they start going off, you're going to back up. You know, in that front group right now, it looks like everybody's kind of holding station, Randy. Are we at that point since that first caution? It's been flat out with absolutely no rest here. Are people just sort of holding station, just trying to conserve a little something at this point? Or are the guys behind this leader, Lazar, are they doing everything they can? No way they're holding station. <laughs> These guys are flat out, Greg Creamer. I guarantee you they're sweating at the wheel. It looks like they're spread out, but when I'm second, I'm working even harder. To, I gotta get him, gotta get him. Like Michael Levitas right now, trying to reel in Mosing, thinking of whatever he can do to get a little more speed and get back up there. He got a sniff of him, didn't he? But yeah, Mosing able to pull it back out. Well, I wonder there if that wasn't Mosing, just had that little bit in reserve. And when Levitt has got there, Mosing was able to just drop the hammer just a little bit. And he's opened up. It's a small margin, but at least he's parked him at this point. Good point, Greg. He may have had more tire left. And Mike Levitt may have used up more of his car and tire to get there. Well, he certainly is going to uh, continue to fight. There's no question about that. That's what Mr. Levitas does, and he is sure fun to watch. There's Patrick Otto Madsen, who's uh, sort of been the pace setter very often in the gold class, uh, but he hasn't been able to string together the number of wins that you might expect, but he's been a pretty consistent podium machine. We saw him get a little bit of power oversteer coming off of Moss Corner. It's really important to be able to get the power down there, and that may be one reason why he's not running with the leaders in this event. Oh, but look at this. We're seeing Benitez now has shaken Colin Thompson, that bright orange machine. And uh, Benitez, I don't think it's a whole uh, you know, matter of the gap between your leader, uh, Lazar, and Thompson has changed. I think it's Benitez has drawn up to Lazar. I think you're right. We saw Lazar with a little bit of oversteer entering turn three, and Benitez oh, closing the gap. a little bit more there. Yeah, he may have used up his rear tires. Let's see if Benitez can bring him in. That was pretty, but I don't know that it gives you necessarily quite the launch you want onto that climbing, winding Mario Andretti run. Uphill, long <laughs> straightaway. Benitez not up into the draft yet. These Porsche 911s are so aerodynamic that you got to be pretty close to get much of a draft to help you catch the guy ahead. Yeah, they really close the air up well, don't they, as we go back here and now watching this fierce battle. And it has been a good one. I mean, that is a, a big group. David Calvert-Jones, Eduardo Cisneros, Amadeo, Javier Quiros, all in that group that are battling a little bit farther back, just outside of the top ten right now in platinum. Here's that lead group in the gold category. Mosing leading away. And uh, here's that. There's Mark Bullitt right now. Now, Greg, see that dark patch on the pavement there? Yep. If you can get beyond that before you break, you're going quick. And I think Mosin is doing it. It's, it's a bump. And it's, it's hard to do because you get that, that little launch and then uh, you try to take the speed off the car. Levitt is down into 9 and into 10, which leads on to the front straightaway and the checkered flag on the last lap. Well, that's a good point. That's sort of an indicator when you're looking at a track service and you see just a nice series of solid black in as opposed to when it's intermittent. If it's intermittent, that means bumpy, doesn't it? And Canadian Tire Motorsport Park has got some bumps in the most diabolical of places <laughs> just as you're entering these fast corners. We got Bill Pelichewski on pit lane. They're checking out that left front. That wheel might even have a little bit of damage. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, they're, they're really obviously concerned about something. They're, oh, look at this now. Santiago Creel. Boy, was that a pretty move, yeah. working down through some of this traffic. Yeah, and right, right on the tail of uh, Michael Levitas. Remember, Creel had that moment earlier when he was off down at the bottom of turn two. Oh, so, so he's right now, back. he's just trying to fight his way up through the gold category cars to try and get into that top 15, maybe even top 10 in platinum. 10 will be tough. Yeah, that can be frustrating for the gold guys when they have a platinum car in the mix. 
For Lazar, he continues to lead, but no question, Benitez is closing. He's coming up, and uh, boy, he makes that transition over much quicker to get set up for turn two. Lazar, just uh, you know, a little, you know, sort of a lazy move over there, doesn't he? Yeah, I think Benitez has got a little bit more car here. Be interesting to see how this develops after the uh, little tete a tete in the last race. Absolutely, and uh, politics is in your future. Well said, Randy. We'll be right back. This finish should be spectacular. We are into our final 15 minutes here, the 10th round of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama at this absolutely glorious facility on an absolutely glorious day. And you know what, Randy? Up until now, it's been a fairly quiet race, but I say up until now because I got a feeling with Benitez closing on Lazar, Levitas once again coming in on Mosing, and Platinum cars working through Gold Cup cars. This is about to uh, light the fuse, I think. Whoa, Oscar Arroyo having a bit of a moment right in front of Bill Pelichewski, and I think they're both going to be able to uh, just drive on. Yeah, must have got it loose in the turn five and over the curb in 5A, and it uh, looks like everybody's all right, and they're heading for the next corner, and might even have a little battle between the two of them to get into turn eight. That's a good thing that there wasn't a pack coming up behind them there uh, at turn five, but uh, if you had to spin, that was the time and place to do it. And it can get ugly when somebody's <laughs> coming off the curb. Here's that up and over the rise. The that, leaders. Yeah, that is Lazar is closing in on that duo. And can you believe that that rise they just came over into turn eight used to be higher and they actually cut that down because they would have cars actually taking off there. Uh, this track, boy, back in the in the day, as they say, you think it's crazy now. There used to be wolves, Greg. <laughs> wolves. In sheep's clothing in, to, in the corners, absolutely. But boy, no question, Benitez now is finding pace, and Lazar is looking at the back of Bill Pelichewski and going, please, let me catch him at a good spot. This can be a hairy moment when you're catching the back of the pack. Pelichewski's already been in the pits, and for the leader, it's a nerve-wracking moment. Look at that. He's down the inside into three. Benitez right on his bumper. Nice job by Pelichewski realizing that they're coming. Good Obviously, man. Obviously, the corner workers really have those blue flags flying so these drivers can see it. But now, uh, you still have an opportunity here because if he gets parked, I'm talking about Lazard, down into the braking zone of turn five. Oh, boy. He's going to try and slice underneath. Does Arroyo see him? He does. Leaves oh, the door Carl open. Oh, Thompson bumps the back of Benitez. He did. Hopefully, he's still got a radiator. On we go, and that has allowed Sloan Yuri to come up, and this lead group of four now, Randy, have cleared that car, and they've made a little break as a result. Oh, yeah, it brought them right together, literally together, where Colin bumped <laughs> yeah. Benitez. He wasn't expecting the, the extra slowness through the middle of five. And Christina Nielsen and the rest behind got stuck behind Pelichewski through Moss, so they've lost touch now as we are watching this battle, and again, Benitez very quick up and through turn eight. Points leaders. Race leaders, Lazar has led every lap. Let's see if he can lead all of them. Benitez pulled out away from Thompson again in that orange car. A little bit of damage on the bumper. I'm wondering if that radiator is going to make it to the end of the race. Now we'll keep an eye on that as Yuri has used that opportunity to get close enough to Colin Thompson now to really go after him. That's for third behind those two white machines. Of course, Benitez's car from the back looks black uh, with that back. Uh, body work on it but uh, really down to these four right now and remember Yuri yesterday's winner he's got to be thinking what changed in terms of the car the track or whatever or I don't have that ability today yeah it's interesting but every team in between the races is trying some adjustments to make the car even better for the next one we often see Yuri come on real strong at the end, though. Yeah, he, he is. And, you know, of course, the track will change, too, won't it? You get different weather conditions. You bet. Uh, rubber laid down by different series running. Uh, everything, uh, it's always a moving target in terms of setup, isn't it? These four have really gapped the, the field on that moving target, too. And uh, we'll, we'll just, I hope Benitez can get up there and give us some action. Colin Thompson taking a look. Boy, he got a great run out of Moss. Uh, I think the camera compression made it look like he was yes. a little closer than he was, but he still got a good run. And, you know, when you get a gift like that and you suddenly get closed up, you really then you, uh, you start to think, I got a shot at this. Yeah, and Mosing has pulled a little bit of a gap again. He's got some breathing room. Boy, and Levitas right now is driving the wheels off that car to keep those platinum class guys behind him. He does not want to let them in front and have that split happen. Yeah, the behind Levitas is Jay Patel, a friend of mine from the Chicago area, who is still getting, getting comfortable with the platinum cars. He's new to the series. Here comes Mosing. Mosing looking strong again. Yeah, he really looks just planted, doesn't he? Really good through turn eight. 
Yeah, something has happened there to slow Levitus down a little bit. Well, I tell you, though, Mosing really gives up the exit at nine to be able to get that wide arc through 10, doesn't he? Always set up for the longest straightaway first and compromise the corners before that to make that work. He's doing a good job there. He's doing a fabulous job, and Lazar may have to up the ante and do a fabulous job to hang on to this pack that's closing on him. Lazar is only 17, but he's got experience years as a kart champion, so he can take the heat. Yeah, that's true. He knows how to deal with pressure if he's a karting champion, no question. We are closing in on the checkers. This one is just building it up. Stay with us. Jeff Mosing continues to lead in the Gold Cup category here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in this 10th round of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. And boy, he has been able to deal with that pressure from Mike Levitas, hasn't he? He's got a good car at the end of the race. That means he's got a good setup. Yeah, it is dialed and he is uh, extracting everything out of it absolutely beautifully. And again, looking to sweep the weekend and not just the gold class, but the gold masters class for the 45 year and older drivers and uh, Mosing certainly showing that experience and some absolutely great pace here down through turn two. Yeah, Jay Patel has gotten his platinum car ahead of Mike Levitas. So Levitas' uh, Porsche has gone off a little bit. He might not have uh, conserved those Yokohamas enough for the end of the race. Who knows? But right now, Mosing has got the handle on this gold category. Yeah, Mosing doing a nice job. Levitas just trying anything he can right now. You know, second place will be good. Here's that battle, though. We go to the front, and Lazar in full defense mode on Benitez. Thompson looking to be opportunistic. They all had to shuffle back into line down into turn one. Oh, but yeah. uh, Benitez is coming. They were three wide. Lazar has <laughs> got a lot of pressure. His car's falling off. And look at Colin Thompson getting a little wiggle over turn two, using all the road and the curb. And Yuri just watching in that Black Hertz JDX machine through turn three, and then this high speed run. You carry huge speed out of three, up and over this rise. Fifth gear. And then you just drop down to Moss. 140 plus. <sighs> a big brake zone straight up the hill into turn five. Was our good there? Heart in your throat. Look at Thompson running way, way wide. wide. And Yuri almost getting down underneath. Thompson somehow able to hang on to it and uh, not lose too much on this run here. Let's see if Yuri had the momentum, though. Yeah, Thompson came in too strong. Lazar has managed to get a little bit of breathing room again. He was good in turn 5, 5A, good onto the straightaway, a real advantage at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Boy, Thompson look at Yuri. protecting. Yep, Thompson's protecting, but remember in round nine, twice, Yuri made outside passes at eight right there to be able to move up a couple of spots. So if Thompson uh, keeps defending the inside, we might see Yuri just say, that'll do. For most of the race, these drivers in third and fourth are thinking about winning. You get down near the end, they start thinking about picking up the position ahead. Well, and Lazar came in seventh in points. Right behind him is the guy who's second in points. Right behind him is the guy who's first in the points. So that's also something that they're running through their minds as well, I would think. Benitez looking strong in turn Boy. one and turn two. That's where he catches up a little bit with Lazar. And these guys have been at it now for 40 minutes plus. They're hot, they're tired, and they've got to stay focused. And it's not just that battle. There's great battles everywhere around this track. We've been watching this one for a little bit. Mark Bullock coming after Cisneros there, that Momo car and that wildly graphic black and white machine. Those two having a great scrap. David Williams in the Merkel car right after Bullock. Santiago Creel has caught back up with this group. He may start moving his way through on the last lap here. That'd be some action. That would be. Meanwhile, back to this group. There's uh, Lewis, who I was talking about, that competition motorsports, Kerbag Ajanian, number 98. He's actually running some awfully fast laps right now. It's just that he's lost the, uh, you know, the toe, the essentially. Yeah. yeah, he's lost the lead pack. He's running. He, good, strong driver. Just didn't stay with the lead pack at the beginning of the race. And here we go. Once again, exit of eight into nine. Coming Anybody up could on win it. Four minutes to go. And Benitez, as close as he's been out of turn 10. He's good in 10 and he's good in one. Mosing working down into Moss still has Patel between himself and second in the gold class, Levitas. It's actually nice now, cushion. Levitas has dropped behind another of the uh, platinum machines. He's fallen back a little bit into the grips of these platinum cars. Yeah, and you can see his times are just not quite what they were. And as a result, dropping off just a little bit. So Mosing, right now, he's uh, his two best friends are those two guards in between himself and Levitas right now. Well, unless they start trying to pass him. That's uh, a good point. Now, now, if they start getting in, in, into a, a, a race with Mosing, that could be an issue. And I, 
I think Jeff's smart enough to let them have it easily if they take a shot at him. You would think, yeah. Just go and look at this. There's been a change. Thompson, Thompson to the second. is through on Benitez, and Benitez is about five, six car lengths back. So something happened that dropped Benitez back and let Thompson come through one way or the other. And Sloan Yuri wow. all over Benitez. There's going to be some action at the end of this straightaway, Greg. Well, without a doubt, I'll remember the points now. That puts the points leader in front of the guy who was second. As they come over that rise, Thompson hunting on Lazar. Look at Leary. He made this outside, outside move before. I think he's not quite close enough this time. Not but he's, quite. <laughs> he certainly served notice to Benitez. You defend. Ooh. Oh, oh and it got him offline, though. Yeah, he came in too hot. Boy, and that's going to give Lewis an opportunity. Cuts down underneath. And this is, yeah, there is Lewis now. And he, as they cross the stripe, Lewis is fourth with Yuri slipping to fifth. Lewis is coming on strong at the end. He's got that stretch like a marathon runner that has the good kick. And he's about to kick his way to the checkered flag, which we'll have when we come back. Seventeen-year-old Jesse Lazar continues to lead here as we close in in the final couple of moments here in this Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama round ten. Colin Thompson in second. While we were in break, we got word from the pits that what happened was Benitez ran wide down in turn one, going after Lazar, opened the door up, and that let Colin Thompson through. And yo, Sloan Yuri is at a moment. He's looped it. That is down in Moss, Randy. Yeah, he had too much speed on the way into five. Got out into the wall and he's still running, which is amazing. Yeah, did a nice job to uh, be able to get going again, but he's lost a huge amount of time. More incidents. That's Melanie Snow in the Universal Industrial Sales Machine. Big cloud of dust. Some kind of craziness going on back there in turn nine. Yeah, the exit of uh, eight into nine as we are at a minute and a half left in this race. She comes by and gathers it up. Once again, here is Mosing, and he's getting pressure from Patel. And like you said, that is not a class battle. Mosing leading in gold, Patel a platinum driver. And if he gets too close, I think Mosing would just open the door and let him through, don't you? Yeah, and it looks like Levitas is continuing to fade. He doesn't have the pace here. Mosing looking real strong. And I think Patel wants to get by. We'll be, it'll be interesting to see if he takes a shot at it. Yeah, Race for the lead here. Oh, boy, Colin Thompson, once he got through and Benitez made that little bobble, uh, he's not only glommed onto the back of Lazar, now now he's going after him, and they're coming up on the back, I think, of Melanie. So some traffic here could play a role here as we are into now this lap, maybe one more, up into Moss. That's a big factor here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, too. Right on his tail coming uh, on the straightaway. Colin Thompson, interesting how over the course of the race you can see the speed change in the cars. Colin's got, got something for Jesse right now. He's got something for him. Boy, he sure does. And I think also being well motivated by the uh, opportunity to open up those points. Looks to the inside. Lazar just sort of faints to the middle of the track. And now they come up in the back of Melanie Snow, and Lazar is able to hang on here. But if he gets held up at all, getting onto uh, this front straight, turn one beckons. Ooh, a little wide there, a little loose. Could and he be. does get held up. But it looks like Thompson had to check up too, Randy. Yeah, he, he managed to park Thompson at the apex, <laughs> so he couldn't get a run. White flag, one lap to go. Colin Thompson within range and taking pot shots at Jesse Lazar. Absolutely. Thompson has experience here as well. And of course, Thompson has experience in these cars here, which Jesse does not. Coming into this championship, Thompson ran the uh, series last year as well. So you've got a little bit more experience versus that youth and exuberance and talent, make no mistake, of young Jesse Lazar. Yeah, did you see that slide yeah. for Jesse on the way into the corner? He's going for it. He's got the heat. This is beautiful. Yep, and you can just see right there is Benitez as he continues to hang on over Mike Lewis. Thompson showing the nose down into five. Set They're, it up wide and yeah. get a run. Get a run. Oh, boy, this is going to be awesome to see. Oh, a little bit of a wiggle there by Thompson as he went to throttle. Both of them sliding off of 5A, coming on that long straightaway. Thompson's going to want the inside. Lazar's probably going to protect that, and Colin's got to try the outside. It's his only way. This is it for the lead. Coming outside up eight. over the rise of day. Thompson goes to the outside. Lazar protects. Too and, strong in the break zone. Yep, not quite enough. And by the way, Mike Lewis has to be going wide. Didn't I stay with that lead group? Because he is all over the back of Benitez. Last Third's chance. Not for sure. Here we go. Into 10. Boy, Thompson almost got up along the outside. That's Kristen Trieger. They slide by easily. And Lazar brings it home. The 17-year-old gets his first win of the season. Colin Thompson, another podium, opening up that point lead. 
in that battle for third. Now yeah, it looks like Benitez able to hang on. Mosing, though, has, has it pretty much all his own way here in this Gold Cup. He's let those two guys through. Yeah, smart way to play it. He's got the room to let the platinum cars go through, so he's clean and unencumbered. He's driving a beautiful race today. Done a good job on car setup. Levis just isn't even in the picture. Something's gone wrong with his car, I'm sure. Yeah, you got to say that the uh, top racing crew, Mr. Oppenman and the gang, have clearly given Mosing a pretty remarkable race car today. And boy, did he wheel it. Boy, we've got Whoa! a lot of action here, though. That's that group. We've been following that battle for 10th. Ooh, oh, that is Enrique Cisneros, or excuse me, Eduardo Cisneros, trying to get it around. Looks like Santiago Creel, you talked about how he had caught that group. Oh, my gosh. The leader gets right in the middle of it. Oh, he had to weave his way through that whole it was group close. of cars. Yes, it was. It was close. You just never know, Greg. You never know. So Mosing thought, I got this one. Whoops. <laughs> and there's Mike Levitas and Patrick Otto Madsen in third. Yeah, there you see the uh, flag tribute from the corner workers here. Great group at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. But for Mosing, what a hard to throw moment. Uh, looking like he had an easy win and coming up against <laughs> all those cars parked everywhere in turn nine. It was that group that we were watching in the Platinums yeah. that were just battling it out <laughs> back around, you know, eighth to 12th place. Uh, there's a look, that's the number 28 of Amadeo Quiros, one of our master's drivers uh, running for NGT Motorsport. And obviously he was hurt in that incident, just trying to, able to coast across the line. Yes, just trying to get it to the finish line. Wow, we've had a bit of everything in this 10th round of the championship, but Jesse Lazar, what a story. There's Colin Thompson, and as we said, that is now he's going to open up that points lead in the Platinum class. And uh, for the first time this year at one of our venues, Randy, we've had two different people win the Platinum class. So maybe a little bit of parody starting to show up here. And the fact that we've got this ringer here, Jesse Lazar, he kind <laughs> of kind of grew up here. Even though he's only 17, he's got a lot of racing history. A lot of laps here to be sure. And Kiros just does coast it and will get scored. <laughs> and just in case he didn't, there's the IMSA safety vehicle. But let's take a look at this last incident in turn number eight, nine. Here comes the pack. Oh, that was. Uh, oh, Eduardo Cisneros bumps the back of the other car, and that's oh, Javier Kiros. Yeah. Spinning to miss him. And everybody behind him just avoidance, and then watch coming up on this group. Oh, we don't quite see it. Was Mosing. Yes, Tips Cisneros going through. spins it, trying to get going again, and almost catches Mosing. Wow. Who is ecstatic? Look at him celebrating. <laughs> Well, why not? He's swept the weekend. You know, we may not have had the sweep that we've seen in platinum, but not just in gold, but gold masters as Mosing is a 45 plus driver. What a day, what a weekend for Jeff Mosing out of Austin, Texas. Uh, he was a winner in another series running this weekend too. This guy, he's a racing addict. He's got it bad. I understand how that is. Well, that M is for Mosing Motor Cars, and he's got quite a collection of uh, machines that he also likes to get out and wheel every once in a while. Life's good for Mr. Jeff Mosing and uh, bringing home that win. So we'll be back with interviews and to give you the final results and points. Stay with us. It's like a racetrack runs through a park here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park and a big crowd has just witnessed a thriller in the 10th round of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. And you know what? When a hometown hero hangs on, that's the best. Your platinum winner is Jesse Lazar. We knew we had a good car throughout the whole race. I'm very confident in the team, the car. And honestly, I just kept looking forward and trying not to make mistakes and I knew if I didn't make a mistake they weren't going to get around me. That's what happened and I had fun and I couldn't do it without my sponsors Door Doctor and Garaga and I'm really happy to be here. And he's got quite a beard for a 17 year old. <laughs> that may have sprouted just in that race from all the adrenaline. Here are the results. Lazar Thompson Benita as your podium. Coleman wins Masters in Platinum in sixth with the big story there in eighth. Sloan Yuri really lost some points. Mosing, 13th overall, winning in gold and in the gold Masters category over Levitas. And uh, take a look there, Patrick Otto Madsen. And uh, Randy, we have an understanding of what happened with Levitas. Apparently, a problem with a throttle. And it was too bad because he was right on his bumper. And here's our winner, Jeff Mosing. It went good. Uh, you know, again, we always watch out first lap. I got uh, Eric Foss watching for me in turn two for the uh, for the, all the stuff that's going to happen in the first couple of laps that we know it because the tires, these uh, Yokohamas, they work great once they're they're hot. But man, you got to you can't step on them lightly when they're cold. Uh, our Porsche platform is just working wonderful today. Uh, these cup cars are wonderful. I love them to death. Thanks to Todd Opperman and Paul for uh, getting the car set up right. We had a bit of a push in it today, 
but it was like 3%. I could deal with that. So uh, no big deal. Great race. Hats off to, uh, again, to uh, Porsche Motorsport North America and also for Canada Motorsports Park for having us. Canada Tire Motorsports Park. Thank you so much. Congrats. Thanks. Boy, it was a great day. Let's take a look at our points in the Platinum category. Remember, Colin Thompson came in 12 up, now up by 14. Michael Lewis sits third, but Sloan Yuri faded big time. He was only three out of that third spot when he came in. In gold, Patrick Otto Madsen hangs on. Fred Portad second. Kristen Trieger still third, but look at that. Levitas and Mosing closing in. They are having great mid-season runs for sure. So. Well, that wraps things up here at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park for this 10th round of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. Great crowd on hand. And Randy, you look at what we're heading into. We're going from one unbelievable high-speed mega venue to another one, Road America. It's going to be a great sight for this series, and I'm just enjoying the racing. It's so hot and heavy. It is, and of course, that's one of the great things. The venues, they're both super fast. This one in Road America, they just happen in different ways. That's the challenges presented to these drivers and these crews as well. A variety of great circuits and a variety of amazing drivers that have always put on a spectacular show. Once again, a huge congratulations to our winners. For Randy Popes, I'm Greg Creamer. We'll see you next time, folks. Take care, everybody. Hey, Mark,